<clears throat> Hello, my friends! No, I'm not dead. I was just out there touching some grass in Japan, but that's a different story for a Q&A, maybe. The MLG team and I banged our heads together once again so we can present to you the official tier list for patch 1.8.47. Yeah, I totally just didn't realize it in the editing process that I was saying the wrong number. We will start with the jungle tier list and... I will turn off this camera now so you can enjoy some juicy gameplay. Heroes here are judged based on how fast they can clear their jungle creeps, how likely are they to secure the turtle and lord, and how much impact they have on the battlefield. That being said, Nolan and Martyrs are still at the top for many months now. Nolan is still very strong because Moonton is only nerfing him a little and I mean a very little bit, just some simple lower base damage and whatnot. How could you expect that this will affect his overall performance? And Martyrs is still the king of snowball. I guess I don't need to tell you anything about him anymore. Hopefully he won't receive some adjustments with his upcoming skin. Though we also got two new faces appearing on the S tier. And these two we never seen before, because there are Lunox and Alice. Lunox received lately some adjustments, where she would now benefit from CD reduction. And on top of that, all of her spell vamp will be converted into percentage magic penetration and vice versa. So she quickly became OP with these two changes and is now being feared in all ranks. Imagine a Lunox dealing 5% of your max HP while ignoring all of your magic defense. The reason Lunox is now a formidable jungler is that she can melt jungle creeps in just seconds. As before, this even counts for the turtle and the lord. I mean, just look at this and tell me that is not OP. Now, since she can benefit from CD reduction items, she can literally spam a hold every 3 seconds or so. TDLR, she's just bonkers. Another bonkers lady is our thirsty vampire Alice. She is probably the strongest jungler right now, because she also have received the most insane buff, where she will no longer have to rely on her stacks to be good. Instead, she now have mana regen as her passive, and will now get more mana back if she is in combat with enemy heroes. Now why is she the best jungler right now? She is no longer a late game hard scaling hero, she got a teleport, her second skill now deals percentage HP damage, though it's capped for jungle creeps. Her ultimate heals better, and she also got a lower CD for her first and second skill. She just checks all the marks that you ever wanted to be checked, so it's officially time to call her mommy. <coughs> Alice is just a powerhouse right now, but with the unprecedented patch notes Moonton decided to release out of nowhere, we're still quite unsure if this has affected her ranking significantly. So it's best to put her still in the S tier for now. For the A tier we also got two new beautiful faces. And it's none other than Belmont and Barrett. Moonton had done their buffs so right that they both went basically from the D tier straight up to the A tier. Belmont also benefits a lot from the new War Axe, making him really strong once he got this item. Barrett on the other hand is now easier to work with, as his stacks are easier to maintain, and he got a dash for his ultimate. Our big friendly dinosaur is now a great pick, as he's not too reliant on his teammates anymore as he used to be. The same can't be said for our flying woman Fanny though. As she have been now one of the top junglers for pretty much all the time, Moonta was left with no choice but to give her consecutive nerfs. And as a result, she's now a bit too difficult to work with after all the nerfs. But who knows, maybe she receives another enemy collapse skin and gets a buff to boost her sales. What are the odds, right? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Back to the S tier you go. Guanyavi jungle is still very strong despite not being picked or banned like she used to be. The same goes for Frederin and Basha, though they are still very good at contesting the turtle, despite being team reliant junglers. Moving on to our bottom tiers, the same couldn't be said for the lowest of the lows. Aldus is not viable in any way to be a jungler for how little he can do for his team in the early stages of the game. Plus he gains more stacks from the canyon minions anyway so please just use him where he belongs. Despite receiving some buffs, Selena will probably never be a suitable jungler as she used to be back in 2018 or 2019. She just clears way too slowly to make any significant impact. 
and Hylos, despite being okay on paper with his continuous second skill damage, he's just extremely immobile and super reliant on his team. Without any help, his enemies can just easily shred him away in a couple of seconds. Zilong and Argus are pretty much just troll picks at this point, and I don't wanna see any of you pick them unless you're being forced because some randogs decide to pick a second XP laner. Talking about the XP laners, what should a good XP laner have to be considered as good? First, they should be tanky enough to sustain some damage. Secondly, they should have some sort of CC to help pick off enemy heroes. Thirdly, they should be able to rotate pretty fast, so they are able to help with the Turtle Lord fight even when it's on the other side of the map. Remember, we're in high elo here, we do these things. And lastly, they should have a decent clearing speed and should be able to defend their turret on their own. Starting off from the best, first we have our daddy Yuzo. Due to his M5 skin, Moonton buffed our big black dragon once again, increasing the damage while also decreasing some of the CD of his skills. Alongside with the recent buff of War Axe, you should never get excited when you have to deal with our daddy. I mean, unless you like some rough penetration. Please, video editor, make a beep over that. Despite receiving some consecutive nerfs, Terisla is still one of the best XP laners. You basically got everything with this chunky fella. Damage, tankiness, sustain, CC, everything. Arlot is almost the same, because after Moonton buffed his ultimate a bit in the previous patch, he's much closer to the point where he was before. His ult plus flicker combo is so deadly, that it sometimes can even turn the outcome of an entire match. When we are looking at the A and B tier, we see many familiar faces, but also some who had a big glow up like Ruby, Guinevere and even Khaled. Ruby is dealing a lot of damage with her burst build, while also being tanky and can apply a lot of CC effects. Guinevere on the other hand is just freaking hard to predict at this point. I mean, she used to be one of the top banned heroes in the previous season. Khaled also provides everything that the XB laner should have, and he would probably even be an ST hero if Moonton hadn't nerfed his damage and passive before. Underestimating the Sandman just because he've been in the Moonton dungeon for so long will be a big mistake. Alice and Barrett are now much higher rated because of the beautiful buffs they received, and Sissy is only an AT hero for us despite she's being one of the most banned heroes. She is very strong, yes, but I think most people are still more afraid of her because they don't really know how she works. Now let's have a look at the lower tiers and especially our FT heroes. Kato Kaja we pointed out already many many times. And I know we will receive a couple of comments again who claim that we have no freaking idea what we are talking about but it is just what it is. Sylvana we already discussed many times as well. But we also got two new entries with Yin and Kaja. First when it comes to our electric chicken, some of you would probably argue that you can still use him on the XP lane. Kaja really doesn't believe long on the XP lane. Just think about it. How many times have you seen him on the XP lane for Mythic and above? He's a Roma and should be played as one. Lastly, we have one of the most feared heroes in Epical Glory, Yin. Aside from the cool skins Yin have, his domain expansion is extremely disappointing, because basically every non-marksman and mage can easily kite him and leave. Heck, some of them even enjoy when they are being kidnapped, and Yin is basically the one that is trapped with the enemy hero. And outside of his domain, he's just like your typical shonen protagonist. He's punching the bad guys in the power of friendship, and then he's feeding the enemy. Now when it comes to Moonton's favorite children's, we have the gold lane. Gold laner should be capable of dealing high damage, especially in the mid to late game, while also being able to survive pretty much all life has thrown at you. For the S tier we have Brody Brody, Brody Brody, Brody Brody. Yeah, we have multiple Brodies because I can talk. Brody Bruno and obviously my beloved one one. Brody has been one of the best marksmen of the game ever since all of his opponents became obsolete. His mobility, range, burst and sustained damage is top notch and it's just extremely hard to pick off this guy. Also, obviously while we were making this script, Moonton just had to make a change on this guy. They nerfed his old damage and CD, however, we don't think that this will affect Brody standing on the tier list at all. In solo queue, you almost can't find any better marksman than him. 
Bruno is also really strong on the gold lane, especially if you're in solo queue. Bruno is generally strong throughout the whole match, but especially in the early game he can just pressure his lane enemy with his big balls. But the strongest gold laner right now has to be 1-1 of course, and I mean, do we really still have to explain it? I guess not. When we have a look at the A and B tier, it looks quite different from our last list. Claude is great again as he can demolish an enemy team with one well set ult if he's fed enough, carry got a new rising tank build with vengeance, especially after the rise of the tanky heroes, especially Alice. If you haven't used her with a tank build yet, you might wanna give her a try. And lastly, Lunox is also an 80 hero on the gold lane, simply because how broken her kid is right now. However, if you do decide to use her as a gold laner, you should be cautious as you rely on your ultimate to probably deal damage. She also has a bit of a trouble pushing turrets, but once you reach the late game, your enemies should really pray that they have their dash skill ready. Melissa also received quite a nice buff, though since Moonton wanted to give us a headache on dropping out a hotfix out of nowhere, we're still quite unsure about Melissa's placement due to insufficient data. <laughs> wow, I sounded like a real scientist for a second. When we're looking at the lower tiers, we see the same heroes as before. Beatrix has still the worst win rate for all gold laners, because she was bombarded with nerfs in the past. She is now really struggling to keep up with the current gold lane standards, and when you think of that she used to be the best marksman for quite some time, it is just sad. As always, jungle marksman also shouldn't go to the gold lane, and while Popol gold lane used to be a thing, he is currently outclassed by pretty much every proper gold laner. I would even argue that Mia could beat Popol into a pulp on the gold lane. In the long run of course. That being said, Moonton increased Popol's damage to jungle creeps, which also basically turned him into a jungle marksman. Now let's go straight down the middle and go to the mid lane. Mid laners should have quite some things to be considered as good. First, they should be able to aid their teammates by utilities or just by freaking bursting down the enemies. Secondly, they should be able to clear their way fast. And lastly, they should be able to rotate to the other lanes fast. Basically do everything fast. The mid lane is still a bit dry if you'd ask me. As the heroes on the tiers basically never change. Still, we have a few new faces here and there that are worthy of a mention. For the top of the top, Novaria is still very strong with her vision giving and high damage sniping. Faramis had also surfaced a lot more this time, since his second life is so precious that it can turn the tides of a battle. And that is one of the reasons why Valentina is also back in the S tier again as there are currently many heroes with great ultimates that are being picked. However, you should obviously only pick Valentina after your enemies have picked their heroes and at least one of them have a great ultimate to steal. And lastly, the last OP mage, yeah it's Lunox. No need to explain anymore why she's OP. When we go to the A and B tier, one hero I'm very happy to see is our cute little Nana. Yes, I mean it, Nana. Nana is actually very strong right now. Molina can now instantly turn her enemies into little Pokemons. And if there were a lot of enemy heroes getting hit by that AoE, all of them would be turned into freaking little Pokemons. The duration of this morph is also very long, around 1. 1.8 seconds, though Molina don't want to stay in bushes for very long anymore and disappears after 3 seconds. She also don't want to run anymore so her range got pretty pretty small. Odette also sees the light of day in these days as she's actually very strong right now with her large AoE ult and as many players are still underestimating her abilities, so why don't you open their eyes to a new world when they are laying dead in their own base and you destroy their base? Lilia is still a really good mage right now as she can essentially spam her skills without stopping. And those orbs deal a ton of damage. Lilia can make your life a living hell if you don't have any death skills to escape her glooms. And Kadita is... Well, Kadita, if you're following this channel for longer, you know exactly why she's strong. When we're moving to the lower tiers, Gord is definitely the trashiest mage that was ever created. No, not even the trashiest mage, the trashiest hero that was ever being created in any kind of game. Achieving 25 hate comments by people who are just looking at the tier list and don't understand the joke why I put Gord every time in the F tier, check. In reality, he's obviously a BT hero right now, quite good but he's still outclassed by many of the previous mentioned mages. When we are looking at the real FT heroes, we firstly have Aldog for the same reason, 
Don't play Aldog on the mid lane anymore. It's not working well. He is an XP laner. Zask is going to be an FT hero until Moonton finally decides to change something on him. The same goes with Silvana. And Aurora will most likely leave her cozy and warm place on the F tier once her revamp is out. Last but not least, we have our dear Roamers. Roamers are quite diverse in a lot of ways. We obviously have the typical tanks, but we also have the support healers and the damage dealers. As the Roamer, you should be the one who aids your team as much as you can, so pick one that suits your team the best way. That being said for our top Roamers, First we have Matilda. Ever since her rework, Matilda had been such a strong hero to face against. Her improved ally dash is such a big help, but obviously her ultimate change has been the big game changer, as you can easily one shot enemies or just dash out of danger. Diggy has finally shown what it takes to be the real egg. Being able to spam his axe and nuke the hell out of your enemies, it is no wonder why he's one of the most banned supports right now. No one seems to like facing this little punk. Minotaur on the other hand is arguably the best tank setter right now. He got heals, knockups and even more knockups. He's extremely tanky while giving a lot of utility for his team and his second skill allows him to build Flask of the Oasis, which is very OP for support heroes. And Gwenevius near instant stun is difficult to avoid, at least if you aren't using Purify or turn on your Ultra Instincts, because you would have 0.000001 seconds to avoid her jump. When we're looking at the AMB tier, firstly we have Tigreal. It seems Moonton was really watching my Fix the Moonton video, because with the changes on his ultimate, he now applies an instant stun while casting his ultimate. This is almost impossible to dodge if you get caught by it even just a bit. This was really the much needed change Tigreal needs, so it's finally time to use the OG tank again. The other Romos are more or less the same as they used to be, so let's move on to our bottom tiers. Blue Uranus and Marsha despite having a lot of HP can be considered as tanks, but you shouldn't use them as roamers. Their skill sets are very good for sustaining and dealing damage, but not for aiding their teammates. It is near impossible to protect any of your allies if they're being attacked, so if you wanna use them, use them on the XP lane where they belong. Yin in theory on the other hand should be a good roamer because of his domain expansion, but he's just way too squishy. Before he gets even the chance to steal the enemy's jungler during the turtle takes, he'll be already dead or getting dragged away by the enemy's roamer. And lastly we have Layla, because why not? Now knowing which are the best heroes is very very useful, but you should also definitely know how to use your items correctly. For that watch this video where we explain to you how all defensive items work. And yes, almost every hero needs some defensive items. See you over there!